Well, hello, SNHU 107, and welcome to week six here in the SNHU 107 learning community. Today, we're going to chat through putting together that final project a little bit early. I know it's only week six, and the final project isn't due until week seven, but we're going to chat about your week six assignments. We're going to chat about putting together that final project and also how you can work with and get to know our amazing SNHU resource, the Academic Support Center. As always, your experience here at Southern New Hampshire University is important to us. It is our policy and practice to create an inclusive and accessible learning environment. If there are aspects of instruction or course design that present barriers to accessibility, please notify the Online Accessibility Center, the OAC, as soon as possible at 866-305-9430. You can also email them at oac at snhu.edu or visit the Online Accessibility Center website. Couple of just housekeeping reminders. These learning community webinars, the SNHU Connect Space or Classroom Spaces, the First Year Experience YouTube pages, those are all academic spaces. So always be mindful of your conduct. As always, these webinars are not mandatory. So they're not required, they're not graded, there's no extra credit points, but hopefully they have helped you with your content from week to week in your assignments. Um, and hopefully you're having a little bit of fun along the way too. So like I said, we're in week six. Whoo, y'all, these next couple of weeks are gonna go fast, I promise you. So please make sure to take a deep breath, plan out that SNHU study time, homework time, because these next couple of weeks do move rather quickly. So here in week six, you guys do have another journal assignment. Remember, you have those templates that you can open up within the module, type right in them. Um, this assignment for your journal assignment is due on Sunday of week six. So this week it is centered in on the topic of feedback, okay? So you're gonna work through these five questions. First and foremost, why do you think feedback from others is important? Share your thoughts and feedback. Question two, describe your perceptions regarding receiving feedback. Think back to times where you've gotten feedback either at work, maybe at school, maybe personally. So really take a minute and think about your specific perceptions regarding receiving feedback. How does receiving feedback make you feel? How could you maybe improve your reaction to feedback? Question three, describe how you can use past feedback to inform how you now give and receive feedback. And then what have you learned from past experiences in which you've received feedback? Question four, Describe the impact that diversity awareness has on giving and receiving feedback when communicating and collaborating with others. So think about when you're around people that are different than you, um, how does that really like help you kind of think about how to give and receive feedback when thoughts are different, opinions are different, backgrounds are different? What problems could you maybe run into if you don't understand diversity awareness when communicating, collaborating with others? And then finally, whoops, it wanted to get ahead of me. Finally, the last question is to describe how you can use strategies for interacting with diverse groups of people as you give and receive feedback. So as you'll notice, everything centers around the topic of feedback for this week six journal assignment. Think about your own experiences, think about your own perceptions and feelings, answer the questions in complete sentences. If you get stuck, aren't sure on something, as always, reach out to your instructor, or I encourage you to utilize the um, SNHU Academic Support Written Feedback Tool, which we'll talk about here in just a moment. Um, so, like I mentioned, that's week six. You have coming up next week in week seven, your final project, that academic success plan. Now, you have worked on pieces and parts of this project throughout the term. You've addressed at least an understanding of all of the concepts you're going to cover and put together in the final project but I'm talking about it a whole week early so that you can give yourself time to work on the project and hopefully work with our SNA2 academic support team and use those written feedback services for your success and confidence in turning in your assignment. As a reminder, this final project is worth 250 points, which is a pretty significant chunk of your overall grade here in SNU 107. So the most important thing I want you to remember is you have worked way too hard to not turn that assignment in. No matter what, get the final project academic success plan submitted for your success. It is a huge chunk of your grade and it can make or break your grade. So you've worked too hard. You put in too much time and energy. Um, and these are your goals that you're going after. So get that assignment in. So what is this assignment, this final project academic success plan? Well, 
It's really about connecting the dots about everything that you've learned here in SNU 107. So this project is going to cover um, a few different areas. You know, one, what have you learned about your schedules? You know, your daily schedule, your weekly schedule, you know, interruptions to your schedule. Um, things like that are things, where, things that we have talked about already. You're going to talk about them again here in this project. You're also going to um, reference that academic mission statement and those short-term goals, all three of them, those three short-term goals that you put together back in week four. Um, so some of these questions, and we go through the um, final project example, because there is an example. When we go through that, you're going to be like, oh, wait, we did an assignment very similarly to this in a previous week. Yes. There's a lot of the content that you're going to be kind of basically like reflecting upon and then connecting the dots as you put together this final project. Some of your assignments may have covered some similar concepts and or questions, but it's not going to be verbatim. So make sure you really pay attention to that, especially for your mission and goals. But all of your journal assignments, make sure that you look back at the grade center for those assignments and review the instructor feedback that they left for you in the grade center, especially if you struggled with your mission statement and your three short term goals. If you need to make any changes or additions, you want to make sure that's present in your final project. OK, use the template. I encourage you to use the template because you can open it right up and you can type directly in it, which allows you to make sure that you don't miss any pieces or parts of questions, that you have everything. If you decide to get creative and kind of make your own document, make sure that you have every single question and all pieces and parts of those questions. Because every time I see a student that misses something or a couple of things and they lose points for that. So just double check your work and as always remember to use your resources. You have a lot of resources and support here at SNHU. So I want to make sure that you're leaning in on those resources for your success. So typically I have a partner with me for this um, session, but unfortunately Allison and I were not able to get our schedules together. So I get to be both Allison and Melanie today for your week six webinar. But what I like to do is introduce you to other people that are part of the different teams and departments here at SNHU because we're all human. And I think it's a little fun to get to know the other departments and put a face to the names that you might see in emails or you might have webinars with. So this is Miss Fabulous Allison Johnson. Um, she is a wonderful human who some of you might have had experience working with if you have utilized um, any of the academic coaching um, from academic support or even um, any of the tutoring sessions because she does work in all of those areas and with written feedback. So she is a member of our SNHU academic support team. A few fun facts about her. She used to teach high school English in a rural town that didn't even have a traffic light. So where are y'all at that are like that small town, rural town living? I was there. Um, my town has like a thousand people and we have a blinking traffic light. I don't even really know what it does. <laughs> but so she's used to living, um, you know, like kind of outside of town. She has been an academic advisor for online students just like you. She loves to work with all students, but she does have an extra heart for those students who have been out of school for a while. So where are you at? The ones that have been out of school for a while, you're back here in the mix of things. She has a lot of experience just working with students in general. A fun fact about Allison is she's a huge fan of stand up comedy and has a collection of old comedy records. That's one of the things I absolutely love about her. But she is just one of the many people that are here to help you at SNHU. So I just wanted to be able to put a face um, to the names that you might see for some of these departments. So as a reminder, if you have not yet utilized academic support, it's so easy to find. It is literally when you log into your Brightspace course, any of your courses from Brightspace, right at the top, like where you see your course menu and you can access the library and my student, all that kind of fun stuff. Academic support is right there. You just click on it and when you click on it, it opens up this whole menu of services. OK, a couple of things that students always ask. They're like, is academic support only for SNHU 107? No, it is for you as long as you are a student here and for any of your university assignments. OK, um, there's a ton of support options and I want to just run through the menu with you quickly because sometimes it can be overwhelming to see everything that SNHU has to support your success and all the people. So sometimes we have to like dip our toes into the water and like just start with one thing. So I wanted to point out that academic support does have as one of its services 24 seven drop in tutoring. This is where you connect at your convenience. 
Um, you connect with in minutes, you know, as needed 24 seven. So 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you work with the first available tutor to ask urgent content related questions in certain subject areas. OK, there's also the written feedback service. This is a service that a lot of students utilize. It's one of the, the favorites that are out there. Um, written feedback is where you can upload and submit any drafts of assignments for written feedback. So when you let's say, for example, you have a discussion assignment. A perfect example would be like a journal assignment or even this final project or any of your big writing assignments, research papers for other classes moving down the line. You will put together your draft of it. You will upload and submit that and then you're going to have a little questionnaire to fill out. It's going to ask you your name. It's going to ask you like what areas you want um, the tutor to really focus in on, like what's most important to you or what you're most concerned about. And then you're going to get feedback emailed back to you after you submit it within 12 hours. So that's a pretty cool thing. They'll just, you know, check those targeted areas, give you kind of a second set of thoughts about any of your writing assignments. Again, any writing assignments for SNHU. It's quick and students really like it because it helps them just feel more confident when submitting those writing assignments. OK, plus academic support has workshops um, on a variety of topics. It could be anything from managing your time, starting a draft for a writing assignment. It can be, you know, different kind of citations, MLA, APA. It can be research stuff. There's a whole, there's so many different workshops that are on there. If you just click that try it now button, you'll be, it'll pull up all the workshops there at a variety of times. You just hop in when it works for you um, at the time that they are. It's a live group session, which is really pretty, pretty cool. The Academic Support Center also has peer tutoring, which is that one on one time with an SNE2 peer tutor whose experience match your needs or what you might need. So this is where you might work on course related skills, discussion board writing and understanding assignments. Um, Appointments are booked. You want to keep them if you get one, because this is something that a lot of students also like to participate in. Um, and so if you take an appointment time, make sure you keep it. Plus, there's also academic coaching, which is kind of a little bit more of a, a deeper one on one um, meeting with academic support. You fill out a request form to be assigned a dedicated coach who matches kind of the needs that you have or the questions and things that you might need. And it's kind of like an ongoing process as you work on academic goals. And if you have questions about the services that are provided or want to know more about academic support, there's this great frequently asked questions, this FAQ section. You can read the FAQ and it gives you a lot of answers. So I know there's a lot of things here that the SNHU academic support team offers with their menu of services. I encourage you to try at least one of them. This is all free to you. It's part of your tuition as being an SNHU student. So be your best student and just go after utilizing some of these resources and connecting for your success. Um, one of the things I always like to ask Allison is, you know, what are some common mistakes um, that students make on these writing assignments like this final project, this academic success plan or any tips or tricks that she has? The biggest thing that she always says is that sometimes students just get overwhelmed by the assignment and they don't turn it in. So don't make that mistake. Fill it out. You've already covered the content. Um, you're just going to fill out the template, answer the questions and submit it. So she always says to submit it. The other thing that she talks about is a lot of times students try to sound like they're somebody else. So be yourself. You are unique. You have a different approach to things or might have different thoughts than somebody else on some of these questions or how things work for you, how you manage your time, what goals you have. So be yourself. Um, she also always likes to tell students to write in complete sentences. Um, to double check your work, make sure that you're reviewing each question and that you've answered all pieces and parts of the questions. Um, it can be helpful to review your assignment from the end of the assignment to the beginning of the assignment to catch anything you might have missed or make sure your grammar makes sense. Those are just some um, top tips out there or things to be aware of for your success. Where are my procrastinators? Where are my students <laughs> that we put things off? It's like an art form. It's a skill set to be a procrastinator, I, I promise you. Um, she always loves to share this quote by Dar Don Marquis, procrastination is the art of keeping up with yesterday. So this assignment, we're talking about a whole week early, right? So don't put it off if you can. You know, get in there, start working on it. Um, I always like to tell students too, that if you're somebody that's sitting in front of a computer, like the assignment feels heavy or like overwhelming, print off the template and handwrite things in and then go back and type it up. You know, do what works best for you. Or maybe you're somebody that you need to log into that template and work on like a couple of questions at a time. If you start early, it gives you the opportunity to do that and then you turn it in. OK, so just remember you have time. If you work on this project and you're unable to get it into the academic support team, 
Um, remember what we said about having, you know, review your assignment from the end of it to the beginning. So you can double check you have all pieces and parts of the questions and you've answered everything, check for mistakes. You could also have a friend or family member or a colleague or somebody review your assignment too. Just so you have a second set of thoughts on the assignment to make sure that everything sounds clear and makes sense and is organized, okay? So some reminders for your success. I'm going to run through the template with you real quick so you kind of know what to expect and know how to put this together is, you know, know how you are graded. You know, look at that rubric that's in every single module with every single assignment, but really kind of take your time and go through it. Make sure you understand how you're going to be graded. Use the template. We encourage you to use the template. Everybody should have that Microsoft Word by now. If you for some reason do not have Microsoft Word or something compatible that allows your instructors to open up those submitted assignments and grade them, you do get Office 365 for free as an SNE2 student. So just remember that that's there. Use your resources if you're stuck. You know, reach out to your advisor, reach out to your instructor if you have questions. They're the one grading it. Or if you're not sure on their feedback or if they needed changes from you, reach out to your instructor because they have graded your work and they'll be grading this project, okay? You always have the SNE2 academic support team. You can come back into the learning community, watch any of the focus videos. You can rewatch this webinar. This is kind of going to be the detailed webinar for the final project. I'll run through pieces of it next week in week seven, but this is the one you want to come back to once I go through the template, okay? And just remember, y'all, be yourself. That is one of the most important things. You have worked so hard. Let's get this assignment done, okay? So let's take a look at module seven. So a couple of things I wanted to point out for module seven, which I know is not until next week. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to go back to module six here real quick. Module six, as a reminder, module six is what we're in, right? I went over that um, six dash one journal that you have for your assignment this week at the very beginning of this webinar. That is due on Sunday, OK? Then when you get into module seven, module seven, you will notice again, we're a whole week early. But next week for module seven, there is a discussion prompt here. This is kind of a discussion opportunity. It is not graded. You do not have to do it. Um, it's really just here so that you could ask questions about the final project or maybe share tips for how you've written it or put it together or discuss anything that maybe has helped you with managing your time or prioritizing your time or how you've stayed on track this term. This is just a great kind of place to kind of just share any thoughts that you might have or general questions. Do not post any pieces or parts of your projects or activities to this discussion thread in any way. Again, it's just here to be here. It's an opportunity to share your thoughts and feedback or ask general questions. It is not graded. This 7-2 project, this is where you will find that final project. As always, you click on guidelines and rubric. When you do that, remember it pulls up the whole assignment. It's going to go over what course competencies it matches. It's going to go through the directions. It's going to list all of the questions. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Underneath here, what to submit. You will see this academic success plan template. Remember, click the blue. It gets to where you want to go. It'll open up that Word document that you fill out, OK? I want to point out under supporting materials, you're going to see two things. One, you're going to see a project example, which I'm going to run through with you today. And then you're going to see that project template here again. This project template is the same as the one up here, OK? But what I really wanted to point out, because students miss it all the time, is there is this project example that gives you a great foundation of how your project should look how you should be writing things and how it should be organized, OK? The other thing is, as always, review the project rubric, scroll through the whole thing and know how you're going to be graded. When you click on project example, it's going to pull up this PDF document. Now, this is an awesome thing to have in your classroom because it really gives you a great idea of what this final project should look like when you put it all together. I want to caution you, do not, I'm going to repeat this again, do not utilize any pieces or parts of this assignment verbatim and turn it in as your own work that will flag as an academic integrity concern and you don't have time for that and you're better than that okay this just gives you a really great idea of how this should be laid out so let's roll through it um question number one identify a problem solving technique or method you have used in a previous situation and explain how it helped you how might problem solving methods be different in diverse cultures or fields of work? How can effective problem solving help you in your academic journey? So notice there is one question here, number one, but there's actually three pieces or three parts of this question, right? So this is why I was saying it's so helpful to utilize the template and type right in it. You will notice the way that this student approached the assignment is they bulleted out each of those questions and they gave their answers in three separate sentences or like kind of mini paragraphs. OK, 
Question two, identify your learning style. So the very first thing you should do is you should share my learning style is and share what your learning style is. If you have a combination of learning styles or you're a little bit of all of them, share that, okay? And then you're also going to explain how knowing or learning about your learning style helps support your success throughout this term. So again, reveal your learning style or styles and then share the rest of the question, okay? Question three, identify which of the five successful habits of an SNA2 student have been most helpful for you throughout this course. Explain how those habits have helped you. So notice it says habits, so plural. So you wanna make sure you share at least more than one of those um, five successful habits, how they helped you and why. If you wanna share a little bit about all of them, say what they all did, share that. But this is a great example of making sure you have all pieces and parts of the question, okay? Question four, explain how you will stay on track in your courses and overcome any interruptions that may impact your schedule. So you'll notice this student shared, like I'm gonna make a to-do list each week and this is why I'm gonna do it. And then like, here's my biggest interruption. The, for this student, it's their children when they're home. So this is their plan for their success, okay? Question five, choose two SNHU resources. Remember, SNHU resources are the departments and the resources that are a part of SNHU. So think people, departments, okay? and two, social supports. That's the people, places, things outside of the university that help the most with achieving your mission and goals and will help you prioritize your time. So you're going to share two of them, but you're also going to indicate why these resources or social supports are key for your success. So you'll notice that this student listed two resources, they named them and then explained why they picked them. And then you will see they had two social supports, they named them and explained why they picked them, okay? Now, question six. List your personal academic mission statement. So you wrote a mission statement back in week four. If you got a perfect score and didn't have any edits or changes, you can just copy and paste your mission statement from week four right here, okay? If you had recommendations for changes or edits, you want to make sure that you make those changes and then have your mission statement put right here, okay? Number seven, list your three short-term academic goals. Three short-term academic goals. Again, you wrote three short-term academic goals back in week four. If you got a perfect score on that part of your assignment, this is another place where you copy and paste all three goals. If you did not get a perfect score and you have recommendations for changes, you wanna make sure you make those changes and put them right here. Also make sure you carry over all three goals because I will tell you every single term I have a student or two, that only has like one goal listed or two goal listed or only part of their academic mission statement. So make sure you carry over all pieces and parts and you're always answering all pieces and parts of the questions, okay? Almost done. Question eight, describe the importance of setting goals on your academic journey. Why is it important to set goals to you? Complete sentence, give your answer, okay? Question nine, explain how you're going to stay motivated to achieve your goals and mission statement based on what you've learned in SNHU 107. So think about what have you learned here in SNU 107? How is it gonna keep you motivated and on track to continue your journey of completing your classes all the way to graduation? This student, you know, they gave like the explanation that like they're the person that has to motivate themselves. So they have to stay organized. They need to use their resources. This is what is key for them. Share your story, okay? Question 10, explain why an awareness of diversity is beneficial to giving and receiving feedback when collaborating with others. You guys worked on this in week six. Um, so remember, this question is a little bit different, but you still should understand the concept and be able to share your thoughts here, okay? 11, explain why it is important to take ownership, be vulnerable, ask for help, and have an open mind to achieve your goals. So make sure you answer all pieces and parts of that question. And the last question is to explain what your biggest takeaway was from this SNHU 107 course. So what is the biggest thing that you learned um, or that you like enjoyed learning about, share it, share your story here. And then you are going to save it and you can send it off to the academic support team for review or you can upload it underneath your module seven assignment, okay? So y'all, that's it. That's all we have um, for week six. As a reminder, your week six journal assignment is due by Sunday of week six, but you can always turn it in earlier as convenient for you and your schedule, okay? Next week is week seven. That is when you have that non-graded discussion assignment, which just is an opportunity to give your feedback, and then you have your final project due. Remember, we talked about the final project here in this week six webinar, so you can work on it early, you can work on it in pieces, you can get it up to the academic support team for feedback, so you feel confident in turning in your assignment. Again, these next couple of weeks are gonna roll fast, y'all, so be ready, make your SNHU time, 
Utilize your SD2 resources and just remember, you got this. Have a great week six.